it's really sunk into me recently how in our economy and the business world these days, that concentration of power and revenue growth and profits really is focusing in on just a few companies. Like I was looking at a mutual fund that had was the S&P Growth Fund. And basically the top 10 investments in that company were all tech companies. I mean, in that, yeah. in that mutual fund were all tech companies. And it was all, I mean, it was like, it was Microsoft, it was Google, it was Facebook, it was Amazon, of course. And when I think about the world of the future, you could say a lot of the profits and a lot of the revenue, a lot of the dynamism in the world is going to come from 15 or 20 companies, not from 500. It's really, it's a remarkable moment. And uh, I also think Snowflake has an opportunity to, to be among the, the important technology companies. I couldn't agree more on both of your points. I think we are in a, a very unique and exciting time. I think when you look at the, the Fortune 500 and the Global 2000, the, the winners for the next generation are being defined right as we speak in technology. And obviously, I, I mentioned that I feel we're well positioned, but I, I totally agree with you on Snowflake, just an amazing company. And I think that the sky is the limit when it comes to Snowflake. Well, I know you're new to the company, but if you could describe kind of the partnership with Snowflake, when did it start? What kinds of stuff do the companies do together? So I had been familiar with Snowflake, obviously, before I ever started a data robot. And when I joined, I was very eager to understand where we were in our partnership because I saw a lot of potential there. Obviously, Snowflake being the system that more and more customers are using to uh, store and, and manage their valuable data uh, and data robot, allowing uh, companies to apply data science in an automated way to unlock the value of that data, you could see the synergy even as someone who is new. And as I dove in, I think there's just an incredible amount of potential for the partnership. Snowflake is Data Robot's number one data platform uh, partner and one of our most strategic partners. And the valuable data that you have, you can now leverage machine learning and give customers a pretty differentiated experience. And so we've really leaned into the partnership. We focused on four different areas in particular. One is on product integration. The second is on customer marketing. The third is on our, our joint sales go-to-market, which I've been um, very closely involved in. And then also with the executive team alignment. And Jeremy and I have regular contact with, with Frank, but also with, with Chris. And that partnership is, is really, really good. So that's Frank Slootman, the CEO Snowflake and Chris Degnan, the chief revenue officer you're referring to. Yes. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So get a little granular here. Describe a scenario f for a customer using Snowflake and Data Robot together. And, and what kind of yeah, great, what kind of value do they get out of it? Great question. I'll, I'll give a, an example. So one that I really like is with Be Beacon Street Services. Cool. So Beacon Street was able to work with Data Robot and Snowflake to optimize their subscription campaigns. And they're on track now to add 15 million in additional sales directly attributed to their work with Snowflake plus Data Robot. So to me, that's one example just showing the, the value and the power of what we can do together. 15 million in additional sales, that will move the needle for almost any company. There's another example that I'll give, which is Harmony. Harmony leverages uh, Data Robot and Snowflake to maximize the value of its data science teams. As a marketplace lending platform, Harmony uses both technologies together to gather, understand, and use their critical data in a way that informs their entire customer journey and makes the experience really delightful for their customers. Yeah. So as we speak, we're in the middle of the COVID crisis which is putting incredible stresses on many companies like never before. How is it affecting data robot and your customers? It's impacting every industry and every uh, business. Our customers are not uh, immune to that. And we feel that we have a, a unique ability and, and an obligation really to help them navigate through their digital transformation during this, this time. And, Across the board, we're seeing companies that are looking for ways to empower their people 
to be as productive as possible, even as the ability to provide an additional headcount may be more limited just based on uh, the current environment. And so there's been a massive push to automate as many workflows as you, you know, possibly can. And also to uh, understand how should I think about my business decisions now that the world has changed so much. So whereas before they already understood that the, the world changes rapidly, your data changes rapidly. And so you do need to automate the application of AI in order to keep up with those changes. Now all of that has been accelerated and the world is changing massively from day to day and and week to week. And so we're helping companies not only keep up with that, but actually get in front of that. We're seeing all of the trends that are happening right now from the changing economy to the shutdown of physical businesses to the move to online purchasing really accelerate some of our interactions with with our customers. And the other thing that we've been trying to do, in addition to helping with customers more at a company level, is we do think it's an opportunity for AI to to help at a sort of country and a global level. And so we've been able to build a highly accurate model that predicted 88% of the top 50 counties most likely for, for COVID to spread in the U.S. We did a blog about that. Um, We've been able to share with policymakers how we see this unfolding and we're trying to communicate very actively with them so that they can take preemptive measures and help citizens take preventive uh, measures as well. We also have launched a dedicated research center to our community so that they can use data robot to uh, perform research that will help with COVID-19. And another theme that we've heard from customers is, okay, I've got all my models. Many companies have hundreds or thousands of machine learning models in production now. But again, the world has changed. How do I manage and update my models quickly so that I can continue to get value even in light of that change and make the correct decisions based on that change? Because as we know, if you have a model and it's not updated as information changes, you won't get accurate predictions. And so we did a webinar called AI in Turbulent Times where we talked about best practices and how customers can stay up with those changes and, and make sure that they're getting accurate predictions and the you know business results that they're looking for. Now, I know you've, you've offered the platform for use free of charge for organizations and individuals participating in the Kegel competition, which is sponsored by the White House. This is for COVID-related research. Is that different than the kind of capabilities you're giving to your regular clients, or how does that work? So... Jeremy and Tom, who co-founded Data Robot, they were initially um, very involved with that community, and they were actually two of the the, the top-ranked data scientists uh, within that community globally. And so it's kind of stayed near and dear to the, the company. And at the same time, when we heard that the White House was sponsoring a competition to do COVID-related research and try to help with the current crisis that's going on throughout the country we felt like we had to do something. And so this was a while back, right after COVID hit, we ended up offering our platform free of charge to anyone who's interested in participating in that competition to help with the response efforts. And that includes both access to our automated machine learning, but also access to the data preparation solutions that we provide with the idea being that we could enable all of those data scientists participating around the world to get to actionable insights much faster than if they had to do it through another means or if they didn't have access to the platform. And so far, the reception has been great. More than 500 people from dozens of countries have signed up for the trial. um, And these people have spent more than 5,000 hours uh, just on automated machine learning alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you able to see into what what have they accomplished with it, what, what the results are? Or is it too early to tell? We know that they've made a significant amount of, of progress, but I do think that the situation is going really rapidly and, and we're pretty focused right now. That's a big focus for us, not just with this effort, but I'd say as a company as a whole, doing everything possible, especially as states look at potentially starting to reopen, to make sure that it's done in a way that is um, going to maximize the safety of, of everybody involved and also allow different counties and states to plan as well as possible when it comes to supplies and other things that are going to be important. And so 
we've made a lot of progress, but I would say the ending to the story is, is still a ways off and we're continuing to do whatever we can every day to help. Yeah. I think that's interesting what you say about counties, because clearly the crisis doesn't affect every country or every region of every country the same. And in order to deal with it and, and proceed sustainably and not have flare ups, it will have to go down to the county to make kind of decisions about what do we do here? And then if, and if there's a quick negative response, then how do we clamp back? So a lot of it is going to be this very close management of the real world and it will require real time data analytics to get it done. I think that's, this may be the most powerful demonstration of, of data analytics and their usefulness and AI's usefulness that we've seen, I think. I totally agree. And it's because it's such a complex problem, right? As you said, it's not at a country level or a state level, it's down to a county level. And so on top of that, people move around, right? And that's happening even more now. And so the ability to provide automated processing of the massive amounts of data down to the county level and then also we have geospatial and as I mentioned, visual AI built into the platform. And that allows you to actually monitor the movement of people and create predictions as that's evolving. So that's why I say I do think it's an important moment for AI to to try to help during the crisis. And and we feel an obligation to do anything possible to to help out. So let's look out a few years, five years. What do you think is going to be happening with your company? And how do you think data and data analytics will be affecting business and society? I mean, there's no doubt that AI is, in my opinion, the, the most transformative technology of our time. I really believe that the potential for this technology to impact not only our customers, but the entire world is really unprecedented. And, and when I was thinking about what I wanted to do after uh, leaving my last company, AppDynamics, and where did I want to go next, I was struck by just that massive shift that's happening in the market. It's It's almost cliche to say right now, but software ate the world, as Mark Andreessen said, during the last decade. And I really believe that there's this new trend that's going to happen in 2020 and beyond, which is about the adoption of AI and companies that previously relied on software to digitally transform, now taking the next step and racing to adopt AI to solve their most critical problems and try to gain an edge on the competition. And so I like to say AI is, is eating software in some ways. All those large software companies that came up are now going to race to adopt yeah, AI. Yeah. And I think that the potential for that is, is technology and is massive. And just to give some flavor of that, it's very apparent to me now having been with the company some time that every company is now an AI company. Yeah. And that includes a, a major uh, retailer like, like Kroger, which is a large customer of ours to bank like PNC or a healthcare provider like Steward Health, every single customer across every single industry can get tremendous amounts of value from this technology. And once all these models are created and they're in production, then you have to have a way of managing them all. And so I think we're uniquely positioned to not only help with the adoption of AI, but the management of all those models and all of that data especially when you combine you know, data robot with a, a partner like Snowflake. So I see, I would say, a, a very large market already expanding rapidly over the next five years. And I uh, you know, do feel like we're in a position to emerge as uh, the leader in that market. And that's one reason that I joined. And it's very excited, exciting for me uh, when I look into the future. Yeah. It's amazing to think the libraries of the future might be AA models. I mean, with, with mi- literally millions and millions of models kind of sitting on the shelves waiting to be used. Yeah, I mean, that's right. And I, I think the beauty of that is, in my mind, it, it allows for a lot of freedom for humans to do the sort of highest level work that they can do and also frees up mental space for, for creativity, right? I, I think we've all felt at a personal level, I know I have, that there's just so much data nowadays and how do you even manage it all? And for us, the real opportunity is even at a personal level, allowing people to automate some of the more manual tasks and just the decision-making 
that can result in, in a lot of fatigue and inefficiency and enabling people and companies to use those insights, which they generate automatically to, to make better decisions, which will then free them up to think about, okay, what else is possible now? Yeah, really interesting. When you talk about AI eating software, so there's, there might be much less of the kind of the drudge work of coding to be done. And that frees up people with, with brains and creativity to be analysts and to be inventors. So it really yes. does. I mean, it's, it's a tremendous flipping from essentially manual labor into automated labor. And I think that's really going to make a, a huge difference as we go forward. Yeah, exactly. We, we talk a lot about empowering human and machine intelligence. Right. There's things that AI can do that, frankly, people don't want to do and aren't best positioned to do. And we can automate a lot of that. And then what it enables and empowers people to do is things that humans are A, better at, and B, they enjoy doing more. So I think if you can do that, it really uh, paints a picture of a bright future in front of us. Yeah. Well, people worry about the machines taking over, but I think a different and more positive, and I think actually more realistic model is of collaboration and kind of division of labor in a sense, just like what you're saying. Yeah, I agree. I think that there's a, for whatever reason, maybe it's some of the movies that have come out, but there, there does just seem to be a, a fear of, of AI and machine learning in places. And uh, that, that can actually slow people down when it comes to adopting the technology. But what we've seen is that there's just tremendous value if you leverage the best of machine intelligence and combine it with the best of human intelligence. It really pushes the boundary of what's possible in the applications again, are across every industry. They're truly global. And uh, we try to reinforce that at every opportunity. We even have our mascot is a very friendly looking cartoon uh, mascot, which yeah. my, my kids love. They love their data robot t-shirts. Yeah. It's just reinforcing that point that this is actually something that is empowering to humans. And we see a future where humans and, and, and uh, machines work together in a way that is very empowering to, to people and enables them to do their highest level work. So Dan, thanks so much for your time today. Your stories and insights about what you do with AI, what you do with data, what your customers do, what you enable them to do. It's really been fascinating and in fact, really exciting for me. Well, thanks so much. I've really enjoyed the conversation and uh, yeah, we're very excited to continue forward and, and obviously very excited about our partnership with Snowflake. So thank you again for the time. That does it for this episode of Rise of the Data Cloud. Thank you for listening. This episode is brought to you by Snowflake. To see how you can get secure and easy access to any data with near infinite scalability, visit snowflake.com.